Incredibles 2 is once again written and directed by Brad Bird and is the long-awaited sequel to 2004's The Incredibles. Despite the fact that this movie was made 14 years after the original, it takes place immediately where the first movie left off, where the Incredibles are facing against the Underminer, and the battle goes out in a way to where it just doesn't end well for the Incredibles. But then a business tycoon voiced by Bob Odenkirk wants to start up a campaign to try to make super legal again and just get them out of hiding. So he personally hires Elastigirl to go out there and pretty much be sort of a spokesman, doing all this crime fighting work to basically show that, yeah, supers are a good thing. Meanwhile, Bob Parr, aka Mr. Incredible, is stuck at home having to deal with the kids. Basically, he's taking on the role of Mr. Mom, and things get escalated even further once Jack-Jack is revealed to have all kinds of powers, which we already saw a hint of that in the first Incredibles movie, but this is the very first time the family gets to see it for themselves. I don't think I really need to go into an introduction about the first Incredibles. It's a masterpiece. It's one of Pixar's best films. It's not only an amazing superhero movie, it's not only an amazing animated movie, it's just a fantastic movie in general. For being an animated movie, it has a lot of things that adults can relate to because basically it's the story of a man who's going through his midlife crisis. It's brilliantly written, the animation and designs are excellent, the score by Michael Giacchino is great. It's just an amazing movie all around. I love it. I did a review for it back in 2015 during my whole series of Pixar reviews, so you can go check out that review. And like I mentioned before, for the longest time, everyone's been demanding a sequel to The Incredibles. We got a Monsters, Inc. prequel, which was fine. We got a sequel to Finding Nemo, which I gotta admit, I'm not the biggest fan of Finding Dory. And for some bizarre reason, we got not one, but two car sequels. Based off the Pixar movie that everyone agrees, yeah, this is probably the weakest one. And we had to wait 14 years for an Incredibles sequel. But I gotta say, it might not be as good as the original Incredibles. I mean, there was no chance in hell it would be better than the first Incredibles, but it's still pretty damn good. I definitely say it was well worth the wait. I had a personal issue of them making this movie take place right after the first one because I just figured it would be more interesting to have the kids more grown up and just see how they're doing and just seeing a much older Helen and Bob. But I gotta say, after watching this movie, I am so glad that it takes place right after the first one because A, we get to see what happens after that cliffhanger with the Underminer. And when you really think about it, the first movie never really wrapped up the whole thing of can supers come out of hiding? Because that subplot is one of the main driving points of this movie. And it's nice to see that little detail that was established in the first movie pick up and continue with this one. Another big detail in this movie that the marketing of this movie really emphasized is Bob Parr staying at home taking care of the kids while Helen, aka Elastigirl, or Mrs. Incredible, heads out to fight crime. And all of these sequences are actually pretty damn funny, and sometimes they bring back memories. I can't relate to Bob in the sense of being a stay-at-home dad because, I mean, I don't have kids, but I will say the one scene I could relate to is when Bob is helping Dash with math homework. Just because I can relate to it from Dash's end, I remember back in my freshman year of high school, I was doing geometry and I asked my parents to try to help me out, especially my dad, and it was just all kinds of frustration going on. We could not figure out how geometry works. And just watching the scene while remembering that little moment from my past, which was over 10 years ago, it was funny. <laughs> so I got a kick out of all the scenes where Mr. Incredible is pretty much Mr. Mom, as I said before. And then Jack-Jack. I was worried about how they'd handle Jack-Jack, because usually when an animated movie has a character that's there for mainly comic relief, the sequel will usually take this character and blow him up to epic proportions to the point where you don't want to see this character anymore. I mean, we all saw what happened with Mater in the Cars series, particularly with Cars 2, where he was pretty much the main character, but Jack-Jack is just still as funny as ever. Probably funnier than he was in the first Incredibles. For one, he's got a completely random assortment of powers, so you never never know what he's gonna do. Anything that he does is a huge surprise and it's downright hilarious. There's a scene where he's facing off against a raccoon and it is just so 
weird, so bizarre, but so well done. And there could be an argument that Jack-Jack is a metaphor for a special needs kid, because he is the most trouble that Bob has to deal with when being the stay-at-home dad. And it's just really, really well done. And then there's a lot of elements that we've seen in the first Incredibles movie that's still very well done here. It's got some fantastic action sequences. A lot of the character designs are just so unique. For example, when you look at the human characters in Coco, and then compare them to the human characters in The Incredibles, uh, they're two completely different designs, and Brad Bird just has a very distinct look with his characters, and I just love it. Now, as much as I am absolutely loving this movie, and it is a great movie, I don't think it's as good as the first Incredibles, like I said beforehand. And I can actually pinpoint the reason why I don't think this is better than the first one, and it all has to do with the film's villain. I've heard a lot of reviews say that with the villain, you could see it coming a mile away, and I gotta be honest, I thought I saw it coming a mile away, but then when the movie plays out and we actually find out who the villain is, I was like, oh, Okay, that, that wasn't who I thought it was going to be, but the villain's just not that interesting. The motive is kind of questionable, it's not very well detailed, I don't think, and the villain just doesn't have the same charisma as Syndrome from the first Incredibles. And with Syndrome, you really got his motivation and why he was doing what he was doing. This villain, not so much. But other than that, I don't have much else to say about this. It's another great Pixar movie, and 14 years of waiting for this definitely paid off. So I'm not gonna say get off your ass and go see it right now, but you have to still see it. It is worth seeing in your lifetime, especially on the big screen, and especially if you've been waiting a long ass time for an Incredibles 2. And that's my review for The Incredibles 2. I hope you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below and tell me what your thoughts are on the movie, if and when you've seen it. Don't forget to support my Patreon page, follow me on social media, and until next time, this is the real Mr. Robinson telling you there's only one.